In this lesson, we will discover the precise definition of a limit. Some people refer to this as the epsilon delta uh, definition of a limit. So what I have drawn for us here is a linear function. Um, I've called this function f or y equal to f of x. Um, it's a line that goes through. Um, I wanted to go through some points just to um, make the example more clear. It's going through the point 3, 5. Now notice the function is not defined at x equal to 3. Um, so there's, an, there's an, an open circle here denoting that the function is undefined at this value. Um, it's going through some other points as well, um, 1, 4. It's also going through the points 5, 6. So if you're drawing this in your notes or copying this down in your notes, make sure your line, your linear function, goes through the points 1, 4, 5, 6, and it's going through 3, 5. Now, what I would like for us to consider is the limit as x approaches 3, the limit of our function as x approaches 3. So, um, so I want you to consider as x values approach 3 from both sides, of course, two-sided limit, your function values are approaching five, correct? The function values are approaching five, okay? Now notice that the function is not defined at x equal to three, but that does not necessarily mean the limit does not exist. Actually, in this case, the limit of our function as x approaches three actually exists and is equal to five, although the function itself, f, is not defined at three. Now, I'm going to clear the board because I have a new question for you. What if I want all of our function values to be one unit, within one unit, from our limit? In other words, what if I wanted, see, the limit here is 5, correct? As x approaches 3, the limit is 5. So what if I wanted all of your function values to be within one unit from the limit, right? So this, all of this, um, uh, these function values here are within one unit from uh, the limit, which is five. That is to say, the distance between, right? This is um, how we write distance. The distance between all of your function values and your limit five is less than one unit right? The distance between your function values and the limit is less than one. Find me, uh, the, find me a number, right? Or a distance that your x values have to be from three, right? From three that will guarantee me that the function values will be within one unit from my limit. Okay, so then what I'll do then is I'm going to draw vertical lines through the points of intersection of the horizontal lines and my function. So let me see if I can do this here. These points of intersection right here between these horizontal lines and my function, watch this, right there, and right here, the intersection I'm drawing the vertical lines through the intersection of my horizontal lines and my function, right? These horizontal lines and my function. I drew them through these points of intersection. The points 1, 4 and the point uh, 5, 6. So this is the idea, folks. As long as you plug in an x value, I think I lost my uh, label of my function here. Let me get it back. This is y is equal to f of x, the name of our function. Let me change that. All right. Good. So this is our function f, f of x, right? As long as, look at this distance here. Look at this distance right that the 
all of these x values have something in common within this interval. All of these x values are within two units from three. They are all within two units from three. I can write it like this. The distance between x and three is less than two units. So this is the idea. As long as I'm plugging in or considering x values that are less than two units from three, that will guarantee me a function value that is less than one unit from the limit. Now, I just chose this number at random. I said, I want all of the function values to be within one unit from the limit. And then you and I found, okay, in order for that to happen, you need to choose x values that are within two units from three. Okay. In general, we need to show that this is true, that we can find this number here, which we're going to call delta, the Greek letter delta. We're going to call that number delta. And we're going to call this number here epsilon, the Greek letter epsilon. And what we want to show is that for any number epsilon chosen, we can find a value delta such that as long as the x values are less than delta units away from 3, your function values will be less than epsilon units from the limit, from 5. Now, let me give us another example just to drive this point home before we start writing up proofs um, of limits and using this epsilon delta definition. Uh, let me look at, let me show you one more um, picture. Now, I tried my best to show you the same linear function that we were discussing earlier. And so this time around, I want you to consider the following. I would like all of my function values, f of x, within a half unit of 5. Now keep in mind that we um, can see that the limit uh, of this function as x values approach 3, notice I'm coming toward 3 from the left and from the right, we can see that as x values approach 3 from the left and from the right, your function values are approaching 5. The same, the same thing that we discussed earlier. So our graph uh, and our inspection shows that the limit of this function is 5 as x values approach 3. Now, I would like all of my function values to be within a half unit from 5, within a half unit from the limit. In other words, I would like all of my function values to be within this area here. All right, so this is 4 and a half, and this is 5 and a half. So all of these function values in this region are within one half unit from 5. I would, I would like us to find a value uh, and that value is going to be called delta, <clears throat> some number delta, such that as long as the x values are less than that number delta, my function values are within one half unit from five. So let me see if I can do the same thing that you and I were doing earlier. Watch this. I'm going to draw a vertical line through the intersection of my horizontal lines and my function. So like this and like th this, like that, okay? So this is what I am seeing, that as long as my x values are within one unit from three, as long as my x values are less than one unit from three, my function values will be within one half unit from five. Let me see if I can write that out. Okay, I was able to write it out for us folks. So the distance between my function values and five will be 
less than one half of one half unit exactly like we wanted as long as my x values are um less than one unit from three. Let me say that again. My function values will be less than one half unit away from five. The distance between my function values and five will be less than one half unit as long as the distance between x and three is less than one. So again, this value here, one half, you know, in just a minute, we're going to be calling this number epsilon, and then this number here that you and I had to find is going to be called delta. So in general, folks, your epsilon value is going to be given. You're going to assume some epsilon, some positive number epsilon is given, usually a very, very small value um, is given. You and I have to find a delta that guarantees that your function values will be less than epsilon units away from your limit as long as your x values are less than delta units away from this value here. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, I don't want to move forward until we notice a pattern between the two examples um, that we, a pattern in the two examples that we just looked at. So the very first time I drew that linear function, um, remember we said we wanted all of our um, function values within one unit from the limit. So in other words, epsilon was equal to one. So we wanted all of our function values to be within one unit from five is what we said. One unit from the, the limit. And then you and I found that if you want all of your function values to be within one unit from five or one unit from the limit, then delta m had to be two. In other words, in that very first, first example that you and I saw, as long as the distance between x and three, right, um, was less than two units, then your function values are guaranteed to be within one unit from epsilon. Now, the second time we said, okay, this time we want our function values to be within one half unit from the limit, right? That's the one we just did together. And then you and I found that, okay, in order to guarantee that all of your function values are less than epsilon or less than one half unit from the limit, then delta had to be one. Do you see the pattern? So, for example, if we said, okay, this time we want epsilon to be equal to one-eighth. In other words, we want the distance between our function values and our limit to be less than one-eighth of a unit. We want all of our function values to be less than one-eighth units from the limit. Find the delta that corresponds to this epsilon value. Well, you should see that uh, right here, um, one times two is equal to two, right? You see that relationship? One half times two is equal to one. So it seems like whatever epsilon that's given, it seems like the delta that corresponds to that given epsilon is just twice the value of epsilon. So if, it, if this pattern continues, then, then twice the value of one eighth would be one fourth. Okay, so that means for any epsilon that's given, delta is going to be twice epsilon. So for any epsilon, any positive value call ep called epsilon given, all we have to do is say, okay, if you want to be within this many units from your limit, then let delta be less than or equal to twice that epsilon value, okay? So that's the pattern that we saw. So this is, what I'm about to write next is the mathematical notation for this. So here we're saying that if the distance between um, x and three, right, is less than delta, then the distance between your function values and five will be less than epsilon, okay? 
So from this point forward, what they're going to be doing and what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at different functions and we need to prove that the limit is what they're saying it is. In other words, we're going to have to find a corresponding delta for a given epsilon. All right, so let's, let's, let's move forward and let's see what we have. Okay, folks, this is very important. This is the precise definition for the limit of a function. All right, this is very important. All right, assume that a function is defined for all x in some open interval containing a, except possibly at a. Remember that in order for the limit of a function as x approaches a to exist, we do not necessarily need the function to be defined at a. Okay, and we've talked about that, and so um, that's why we say except possibly at a. Now, this means the limit of our function as x approaches a is equal to some real number l. If, so this limit is l, okay, this limit of our function is l if you can show that for any number, epsilon greater than zero, so epsilon is some positive number, whatever positive number, that there corresponds a corresponding number delta, another positive number delta, such that the distance between your function values and that number L, which we're calling the limit, right? The distance between your function values and that number L will be less than epsilon whenever the distance between x and a is less than delta, okay? So if you and I, our quest, our challenge, our task, our, our job for each one of these problems that we're about to look at is to find the delta that corresponds to a given epsilon. You and I are going to have to find delta. That's going to be our job. If you, can, you and I can find this corresponding number, delta, that corresponds to epsilon, then you and I can prove or will prove at that point that the limit is equal to L. All right. So this language here is very important. All right. So I think we're ready to look at an example. You ready? Let's do it. All right, here we go, folks. We need to prove that the limit of this linear function, 4x minus 15, as x values approach 4 is equal to 1. Okay, now we've been talking about, you know, you know linear functions, polynomial functions. You can just plug 4 in. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 15 is equal to 1. So it seems like this is true, right? But we want to use a precise definition, all right? We want to use this epsilon delta uh, definition in order to prove that the limit of this function as x approaches 4 is indeed 1. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to I'm gonna set up our proof in two steps. It's going to be like a two phases here. All right, step number one is going to be find delta. All right, so here we go. We're going to find delta. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to assume, we're going to assume that some number epsilon, some positive num number epsilon is given, first of all. Okay, so what we want to um, see here is we want the distance of our function, which is 4x minus 15. We want the, di the distance between our function values and 1 to be less than epsilon. Wh however close you want my function values to be to 1, right? Um, however close. Epsilon just represents some small number, usually a, usually a small number, right? So you want me to get within epsilon units from 1. Okay, cool. So if you want me to get within epsilon units from 1, I need to find, I need to find you a delta value and some number delta that would guarantee that my function values will be less than epsilon units from one, all right? So here we go. What we're gonna do is, what you're gonna see is in, in each one of these examples, the, uh, I don't wanna say trick, but like the pattern, let's say the pattern, 
the pattern is to try to manipulate this expression in here so that you end up with x minus this value, x minus 4, x minus 4, x minus a, right? In the definition, we uh, this value here is called a. So let's do this. Let's simplify what we have here. So then this is the absolute value of 4x uh, minus 16, correct? Is less than epsilon. Just combining like terms. And then what we can do is we can factor out a 4, right? So we can say 4, the absolute value of 4 times x minus 4. Look at that. That x minus 4 is exactly what we wanted. We wanted um, this to be x minus a, right? That's our a value. So good. We just need to take care of this 4. We can actually pull this 4 out. Let me move the screen up a little bit. Okay. So we can actually factor this 4 out. So we have 4 times the absolute value of x minus 4. Um, is less than epsilon, which would then imply, each one of these arrows, folks, by the way, says implies. So this statement here implies this one, which implies this one, which implies this one, which would imply at this point that um, the distance between x and 4 is less than epsilon over 4. Look at that. Okay? So, so far what we have is this statement here. The distance between my function values and 1 will be less than epsilon, right, as long as this distance here between x and 4 is less than epsilon over 4. Let me write that out. So this is what we wanted. We wanted the distance between our function values and 1 to be less than whatever epsilon you want, right? or they want, um, and that will happen as long as the distance between x and 4 is less than epsilon over 4. So we're going to choose delta to be equal to epsilon over 4. Now listen, um, epsilon over 4 or anything less than that. So, so any value less than epsilon over 4 will also work, right? So if epsilon over 4 gets you within... Um, within epsilon units from 1, then any value less than epsilon over 4 will, uh, will also get you um, less than epsilon units from 1. So any, uh, we're going to let delta be epsilon over 4 or anything less than that, okay? Now, that's step number 1 is to find the delta. Now it's time to write the proof. Now the, the format of the proof is very important, so take really good notes. All right, here we go. So we're going to write the proof. The, the way we're going to start every proof is let epsilon greater than zero be given. So you give me an epsilon, I find you a corresponding delta. All right? So let epsilon be given. Whatever you want epsilon to be, whatever positive number you want it to be, probably some small number. Okay? All right? We will assume that the distance between x and 4 is less than delta. And we're going to choose for delta to be less than or equal to epsilon over 4. Okay? So what so we're telling, you know, we're we're saying right here what delta is. You and I now need to show, our goal is to show that with this choice of delta, with this choice for delta, that your function values, your function 4x minus 15 will be less than epsilon units from 1. All right, so here we go. That's what we need to show. Let me write that down, actually. All right, so we've chosen a delta value, and we have to now show that that was the right choice, right? With this choice for delta, this is going to happen. All right, so let's do it. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start here. Okay, so this is the distance between our function and 1. Well, that's equal to the absolute value of 4x minus 16, right? Like we said earlier, um, which is equal to 4 times the absolute value of x minus 4, right? Let me move this up a little bit. Okay, I think that might be good enough. Um, which is less than 4 times 
epsilon, oops, sorry, let me rewrite that, four times epsilon over four. Because we already know that the absolute value of x minus four, look right up here, is less than delta. This is less than delta. And remember, delta is less than or equal to epsilon over four. So then what we have is four, oh, I'm sorry, right here, four times epsilon over four, right? Because we already know that this value here is less than delta, which is epsilon over four, okay? So which is, watch this, less than, you know, this uh, divides out with that. And so now we have shown that with this value for delta, your function values will be less than epsilon units from one. The distance between your function and one is less than epsilon. You see that? That's great. So you have proven now you have shown that for any epsilon, any epsilon that's greater than zero, you have shown that the function values will be less than that many units from one as long as the distance between x and four is less than delta, where delta is epsilon over four. So now we can say, yep, it's true, the limit of 4x minus 15 as x approaches 4 is equal to 1. Our proof is over, okay? Let's do, you know, let's do a couple more to make sure that we understand this process, all right? So let's, let's start with a different function, and let's prove um, a limit. All right, in the second example, we want to prove that the limit of 8x plus 5 as x approaches 1 is 13. Please notice that as you plug 1 in, 8 times 1 is 8, and 8 plus 5 is 13, right? So our intuition says, yes, this is true, right? But of course, we want a precise, um, want to use the precise definition to prove that this limit not only exists, but that, that the limit is actually 13. Now, um, let us uh, start by finding delta. We need to find a delta value, all right? So let's go. All right, we will um, assume that epsilon is given, right? Some, some number has already been given. So that, again, remember epsilon represents how many units from, in this case, 13, you want to be, right? How many, within how many units do you want your function values to be um, from 13? Do you want to be maybe, do you want your function values to be within one half unit from 13? Do you want your function values to be within or less than 0 0.001 units away from 13? Like, do you want to be, how close do you want your function values to be to 13? Arbitrarily close. All right, so just let del uh, epsilon represent that small distance. Okay, so here we go. The absolute value or the distance of our function, right? Let me put that in parentheses. The distance of our function and this value 13, we want that to be less than epsilon. Well, that would imply that the distance of 8x, uh, you know, 5 minus 13 is negative 8. Um, the distance of, um, or the absolute value of 8x minus 8 has to be less than epsilon. Well, that would imply that 8 times x minus 1 must be less than epsilon. Now, I know I'm on the right track here because notice that this is like, in the definition, it's x minus a. Uh, in this example, your a value, the value that your x values are approaching is 1. And so you want this to be x minus 1, and that's what it turned out to be. So, so far, so good. Let me move this up. Now, this would imply that the absolute value of x minus 1, the distance between x and 1, must be less than epsilon over 8. So do you see that there? Right? We are going to choose um, delta to be less than or equal to epsilon over 8. That's going to be that corresponding number, right, that um, allows this to happen. 
So if this is what you want, if you want the distance between your function values and 13 to be less than some number epsilon, well, that would imply that the distance um, uh, between x and 1 must be less than epsilon over 8. So whatever epsilon you give me, I'm going to divide that number by 8, and that's going to be my delta value. Okay, so delta, we're choosing delta to be eps less than or equal to epsilon over 8. Epsilon over 8 will work. This number will work, um, or anything less than it will also work. All right, it's time to write the proof. All right, so here we go. Let epsilon be given, okay? You give me an epsilon, <laughs> I find the delta, right? Okay, so let epsilon be given. Now, we will assume that the distance between um, x and 1 is less than delta, where delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 8. Remember, we found that value a minute ago. Now, um, our goal is to show that our function values will be less than epsilon units from, uh, what was it in this example, from 13, right? With uh, less than epsilon units from 13, the proposed limit. Um, when, that will be true, when delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 8. All right, so this is what we're trying to show, that this happens for this choice of delta, this happens. All right, so let's go for it, folks. So we have the absolute value of 8x plus 5 minus 13, right? So that's the distance, right? This is, this is how, we, how we say the distance between your function values and your limit. This is, this is your function, and this is the proposed limit, right? Um, so anyway, that is equal to... Um, the absolute value of 8x minus 8, which is equal to 8 times x minus 1. Now, we already said, assume that the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta. And delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 8. So therefore, this is less than 8 times delta, which is epsilon less than epsilon over 8, which is less than epsilon. So we did it. We were able to show that this actually happens with this choice for delta. So we've done it, folks. Good job. We have proven that the limit of this function as x values get close to 1 is equal to 13, indeed. All right? I feel like we should do at least... Let's, let's do one more example but on this time around, I would love to have you um, do a lot of the work, and let's see if um, let's see if you're catching on to the pattern and the process of proving a limit. All right, so let's look at another example. All right, folks, here is the example: prove that the limit of this function as x values approach three is equal to two. Remember, your first step is to find delta. So whatever epsilon they're going to give us, and uh, what, whatever small value they want your function values to be from 2, we have to find a corresponding delta value that, that satisfies that condition. So right now, I would invite you to pause this lesson. Pause it right here, please. And... See if you can get this process started. Find delta. At least do step one. Find delta. Why don't you go ahead and do that now? Pause the video, please. All right. How did you do? So we assumed epsilon greater than zero is given, right? Some positive number is given. And what we want is... to show that the function um, is, the function values are less than some epsilon units away from two, right? Um, so 
Um, this simplifies here to negative 2x plus 6, the absolute value thereof. And then you can factor out a negative 2. And notice that right away you see x minus 3, which is a good thing, right? That's what we kind of want to do. That's kind of like the game here, right? Is like, how do I manipulate this expression within the absolute values so that I end up with x minus 3? And you can see that happening right now. Um, the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. And so in order for this to happen, in order for the function values to be less than epsilon units from 2, we're seeing that the distance between x and 3 must be less than epsilon over 2. So this is going to be our delta value. Okay? I invite you to pause the video, pause this lesson right here again, and to practice writing the proof. Go ahead and pause the lesson here, and I'll check back in with you in just a minute. All right, how'd you do on the proof? So we started with let epsilon greater than zero be given, and we want to assume that the distance between x and three is less than delta, where delta is less than or equal to epsilon over two. Now we want to show that this was the correct choice for delta. So here we have our function, the distance, the distance between our function and two, uh, which is equal to the absolute value of this expression which is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3. And we already assume that this expression is less than delta, and that delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 2. Therefore, this is less than or equal to 2 times epsilon over 2, which is equal to epsilon. So we showed that, we have shown that for this choice of delta, that our function values will indeed be less than any epsilon uh, greater than zero that's given um, from two. So we've proven the limit. That is, we have proven this statement here. The limit of negative two x plus eight as x approaches three is two. Great job, folks.